that I feel that Furia's bracket was a little bit tougher than than BDS's oh, was. Oh, great, hundred percent. Um, but that, but I mean, that doesn't tell us the full story. I mean, yes, they had a they had a, a toughest uh, bracket to get to get here, but BDS still can beat them. I mean, we that that doesn't tell us that the anything at this matchup. So Furia looking really strong. BDS so far excellent as well. So we shall see. Yeah, I think you know. In 3v3, BDS have to be the favorite, so Furia have to be on form right now. And they might have a clear shot here. No, defended well by Seiko. He's been getting goal side on pretty much any shot that the opponents of BDS have had in threes this weekend. Lost, showed up huge in yesterday's threes matches. Can he have a repeat of that performance on stage? They beat Karmicorp yesterday backstage. Now they're back in the highest pressure situation. You mentioned Lost, and he's one of the players that have you asked me maybe a month ago? I would say, oh, what a goal by Seiko. Yeah, that was a that was a, a strong. I mean, this is what we were waiting for from V1. You know, <laughs> some of these shots like uh, very accurate, very powerful mm -hmm. at the net. That's what Seiko did. Every single defender on the net, and they were not able to stop it. Yeah, just simple. And it was a mistake from Jan that led to that. He tried to pop the ball down the line, tried to get it up into the air, but he centered it for Seiko. You can't be making those mistakes against a team who are so solid with the fundamentals now. Here comes your man Lost, who, you know, has to continue to impress with his new form. I think his smart version of himself. Exactly. He used to just be known as a mechanical player who would go 100% for every ball, never change pace. But he's found that so many more gears and the changes of pace, keeping his opponents guessing. Yeah, he, it was uh, about being fast, basically, and mechanic for, for Lost. And now he is so much... Uh, more contained. It, it seems like he understands what where his uh, teammates are at, what he has to do that actually benefits the team instead of uh, only himself and getting the, those clips. So, so much I mean, better player uh, team-wise lost. Now, they, he hasn't lost that spark. He's still that mechanical player that can be very fast, that can be very dynamic, and can surprise you every now and then with some craziness going on. All right. Capitalizing on a missed touch there, but Jan's actually missed his touch again. Needing to get settled into the game still. The star player from Furia, who's going to be required to play every game mode today, unless we have any changes of lineup, which we don't expect. Yeah, BDS play a very simple 3v3 style. It's not complicated. It's not overly fancy. It's just efficient. It's fast when it needs to be. It's strong when it needs to be. They slow the ball down when they need to. They just play very honest, and it is extremely difficult to force a misplay from this team, far less get one for free. That's how BDS actually beat Furia at Worlds last year, right? Uh, Furia came, came in from the high that, that he was uh, beating a Moist, and, and then, you know, it was a, a simple kind of uh, play style from, from BDS that gave the win. And oh that, my. What a, that was great from Yanks, waiting to see what would happen, and they, they just realizing uh, they're crazy, they don't know what they're doing. So. Seiko? Oh, Hello? What? Did Seiko... I, I can only imagine that Seiko did not have a flip there. If all four of his wheels were not on the wall when he jumped off the wall, then that would count as his flip rather than his jump and then having a flip available. So, you know, I'd have to see his POV to be sure, but I think he probably jumped off the wall with less than four wheels touching the wall. And when you do that, you don't have a flip to work with. Regardless, uh... Kudos on Yanks. I mean, you, you can't be trusting your opponents that they're going to be perfect the whole time. You get out sometimes. Okay. okay. Um, two in the, in the net, and no one was able to defend that. Uh, Card just making it easy. I mean, it was an easy shot. He didn't make it look easy. Oh, it wow. was actually easy. Yeah, that's a big miscommunication by Monkeyman and Rise. They thought that the other was going to go. Monkeyman thought Rise was charging out of the net to challenge this, and Rise thought Monkeyman would turn on the spot and challenge. Neither went. That left a shot uncontested, and it was a well placed one. We got Furia then on the lead now for the first time in the match. But for the pass, no, nope, it's easily deflected by Rise. Cards needs to defend that one. That's not great. Lost, uh, forced to retreat, and now Seiko, easy shot. That was a good bump, uh, also by BDS. Yeah, simple for Seiko here. Monkey Moon just forcing Lost out of position. Well, you know, Lost, he, nobody told him he had to get into the corner there, but he wanted to be there. And uh, I'm sure shortly upon arrival, realized. This is not where I want to be at all. I'm about to get bumped, am I? And it's wide open for Seiko. Nice fake kickoff here from Fury. We'll net them next possession. But BDS are all over them again. Lost moving forward. Rice is going to intercept that one. Passing to Monkey Moon. Just trying to the... That was a good save. A good read by, by Card. 
Another shot by Rice and a lot of defenders from Furia on that ball. That might be a little bit panicky, but open Wait. net completely. And BDS oh, is going to eat that one. Yeah, it is in. <laughs> well, BDS have been caught out of position here. Good read by Jan, though. He knew exactly where that was going. And he managed to beat Rice to the punch. Rice, I think, expecting at worst a 50-50 there. He did not expect the speed from the opponent. Back on track, Furia here. They win this kickoff. Watch out with Lost. He's going to keep it here on the blue end zone. It's going to be Yanks faking that one. We saw it before, so I'm going to call it faking. It happened with the Falcons. <laughs> Went for the pass, but Seiko now. Deflected by Lost. Lost waiting here, pushing forward. Waiting for Rice. Rice beat him. Yanks now with control. The ball on the corner. Card waiting patiently, maybe too patiently. And Seiko is going to take it from his hands. And Fury of one minute and five seconds away from increasing their 3v3 win streak to four games. First three of those against Carmi Corp, and this one against BDS. That's an incredible record for any team in the world. How about a team who crashed out of Boston in 9th, 12th? Actually, in last place, I'm just uh, forgetting how bad that result was because it was such a shock to see. Monkey Moon lean back, reset, Ooh. huge mind game, Ooh. and the finish. It's a tie game. And that's why Monkey Moon is undefeated to one one as well, man. That's... I mean, just fooling every single player. Perfect perfect catch on the air, using the, the reason on the right moment. And, and those catches are tricky because sometimes as a defender, you're not sure if he's got the reset or not. And, and the way he used the flick at the end was a beautiful to just make a, a perfect picture placement on the net and get the goal. Yeah, it looks like Fury have got an opportunity here to start another attack, get in the, the lead once again. Had, see, had two of their leads removed already. I'm sure they'd love to get another one before overtime, but it's BDS who are threatening. Great read by Card over his own crossbar, and the counterattack commences. I'm a little bit confused from Furia, I'm not gonna lie here. Um, they're challenging in an awkward way. They did that with Falcons, but they were forcing Falcons to move a certain way, and then they can counterattack. But that's not what's happening against BDS right now. This last second here, Monkey Moon will kill it. I'm gonna force the overtime. And Furia faked one kick off this game. They decide that trying to fool BDS a second time would be foolish as they play standard. I'm sure BDS will be happy to get into midfield play, but they might not be too happy about where the midfield plays. Garing is right in front of their goal and a shot from Lost flashed in front of their eyes before BDS collect the ball. Rice looking to slow play here. I'm sure Seiko's informing the team that he's on low boost as well. Monkey Moon's got plenty. Oh, a double commit from Furia. No one in the net here. This is a bit risky. They're getting clumped up in the back corner. But once again, it's Furia with control. As he looks to bring the ball down the other side of the pitch. Is that going in? Very close. They got the pass now. Lost, putting in the center. Yanks trying to go for it, but good deflection by BDS. Steal the ball on the card's hand. Card. I, I thought he was going for the pinch. Maybe he's trying to fool the, the defenders. Rice now taking it towards the orange end zone. Rice keeps control. Denied the flick by Yanks, up and lost. Pretty strong on the clear. Yanks moving forward with good one. Now the pass for Rice. Rice has no. He didn't have the, the reason. Could have been an awesome shot. And that was Whoa. going in. What? Whoa. Well, BDS have won it, and it's Seiko with the goal. He has pitched it in <laughs> off the back corner. That's unbelievable. I mean, Fury were caught completely surprised, flat-footed by Seiko's brilliance. It's been a while since we've seen the back corner pitch on target. Absolutely unreal by Seiko. It's one of those shots that you don't expect <laughs> at all. I mean, Card was on the wall waiting maybe for a very strong pinch that goes, that rolls on the wall, but nothing nothing that bounces and goes yeah, into not, not the, on the target. Net. Yeah, maybe he's thinking, okay, he looks like he's giving this one some juice. It's gotta be going upwards into the middle. No, it's just on target immediately. I mean, what a play by Seiko. If that's not the play of the series, then <laughs> we've got another worldie coming up later. So, Johnny, I felt like Furia had the best in, uh, in the exchanges in the beginning, uh, and then kind of let it go, kind of uh, allowed BDS to attack too much. And I feel that this is this is just the way that Furia works. They, they counterattack a lot. They, they are 
reliant on the defense, oh uh, maybe too often. But <laughs> I, I don't like to be defending on the net the whole time. I, I, I prefer when they are able to to get that control in the midfield, which is something that they used to have with Kayo and not mm. anymore now with Lost. Yeah, you, you know, they, they've been working on their defense. I feel like Furious uh, always been known for their attacking play and they've always looked best going forward. Uh, but you know, they, they've, they've improved their defense. Lost in particular has really improved his defense over the past few uh, months. It wasn't enough. And now they've picked 1v1. This is what they do. And the any series where 1v1 can come up twice. Here you fancy their chances. It's Monkey Moon and his undefeated ones streak. At least that's the the good way of saying he's one game for one in the matchup. It, it counts, okay? It counts. <laughs> one thing I'm gonna say about this tournament is that it has shown a lot more potential in ones in some players than oh, yeah. we were giving them credit. Like oh, Vati, you know, we, we knew he was good. We, we knew it, but uh, as excellent as he proved himself to be, uh, maybe not. And this. now Monkey, Monkey's been great. I mean, in one v ones as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if he takes it uh, the win here against Yanks. Yeah, great jump there. Monkey Moon knew the demo was coming, so he jumped nice and early for the cross fit shot. Now, Monkey Moon, his one win that he did get earlier came against Chronic, so it's a quality win mm -hmm. that he had earlier in this tournament. He's definitely a force to be reckoned with in the world of ones. Comes from a 1v1 background way back in his PS4 days. But can he handle Yan? Can he handle the air dribble bumps? Can he handle the aerial game? Ooh. That's what chance for Yan, but I think Monkey Moon's recovering quickly. Yes, he is. Recoveries uh, are great here for Monkey Moon. The flick. Good defense. I mean, very well defended by, by Monkey Moon. Uh, as long as it doesn't land in a good way uh, for Yanks to be a, an easy goal, it's, I count it as a good defense on my books. Yeah, and you know, Monkey Moon's ground play has been, I think, right up there with the best in the world at this tournament. I haven't seen too much of an aerial game from him in 1v1. So he loves to play for the flicks, play for the shots. Here he comes with another one. I mean, he's a real heavy hitting player. Jan's done well to deal with that one and not only defend the net, mm. but defend the back corner boost. He loses control of the ball, though. And Monkey Moon's up by two. You were talking about high, heavy hitting. Heavy hitting, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, was able to get a very heavy hit over Yanks. Yanks, maybe not expecting a, a hit towards the net, uh, shot towards the net in that moment, and he didn't even jump. So, Team BDS, I mean, not BDS, Monkey Moon, taking yeah, control of this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind, yeah. Kind of, I mean, he's the he's representing BDS uh, at this moment. But yeah, Monkey Moon just dominating Yanks in the Beautiful. first minute and a half. And already Monkey Moon is showing that he has the challenge game to keep Yan at bay. And another perfect shot goes top pins. BDS are looking phenomenal in this crew battle format. We wondered if they simply had an easy group, but now no. they're taking down Fury as well. And I can't imagine Jorby saying, no, it's only three goals, you know. You know, he still can do the comeback, but <laughs> it's, it's two minutes already into the game. And the way that Monkey Moon is not allowing Yanks to attack, that's very worrisome uh -oh. if you are. But that's good. <laughs> finally, finally he gets, uh, he gets one of the bumps. Now you can say that Yan is one for one with his air dribble bumps in this game, but if you think back, actually, he failed an air dribble in the previous play. He didn't even have time to set up an air dribble bump because Monkey challenged him so quickly and got the third goal for himself with the counter attack. That's, I think, going to be Monkey's main strategy, to get the win against Yan's aerial bumps. He has to challenge early. Is it another heavy hit? Of course it is. It's 4-1. Monkey Moon will not be denied. Yanks decided to go for the boost and try to steal it from uh, Monkey Moon. Maybe get, get the bump there. Yeah, probably the a bump as well. Yeah. But um, good skills from Monkey Moon, just avoiding that, that hit, getting the, getting the boost, and then acknowledging that that the, the net was quite completely open, was able to get that shot. So four to one. I wasn't expecting this, to be honest. I, I'm completely surprised. I mean, I wasn't surprised if, if BDS wins the ones. Uh, I wouldn't be that surprised, but uh, three goal yeah. lead by, like at this moment, it's surprising to me. Yes, yeah, dominant. It's another bump. I think he's hit it too high, though. Monkey Moon jumped. And, wow, yeah, I'm so lucky the Monkey Moon jumped there because that was really, really high. Too high with the setup. Monkey Moon could have just counterattacked there on the open net. Monkey Moon is not falling for any of the fakes from Yanks so far. <laughs> oh, that's a screamer. 4-2. He had it starting to come alive in the air. Finally showing something. And that last hit was, uh, I mean, so much power onto the net from Yanks. 
Put a trailing from uh, by two. Half time here on this 1v1. Look at the face of the monkey move. So <laughs> calm. So calm. Yeah, the, this kind of mentality is exactly what you need for 1v1. You can't get tilted by the bumps. You can't get tilted by the boost deals. And Monkey Moon is fully focused on his job right now. And he's making it look easy. I mean, look how simple this was. Just a couple of touches to the backboard. Jan thought he had time to drive up the back wall. He's nowhere near in time as Monkey Moon makes it five. It's a weird placement because uh, the ball bounces on the crossbar, but like right in the middle of the crossbar. So Yanks thinks that you know, going over the wall from the wall is going to be the easiest, fastest way. And, and really, it wasn't. And, and Monkey Moon was able to get there, you know, way ahead of, uh, of Yang. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Monkey Moon. He got he's, it. <laughs> he's not really had anything that he could do here. This is such a frustrating play. Yeah, and just bumps him <laughs> into the post. And Monkey Moon had nothing to do except hope that he could get a good 50-50. That's a really smart play, though, on the turn by the Brazilian player. He's only down by two. This is absolutely winnable for him, but he needs to be clinical. Monkey Moon's been brilliant. There's a lot of time to play here. Monkey Moon, from the air, you wanted to see this. You wanted to. You got the reason, maybe? No, oh, my oh, God, the fakes. come on. <laughs> oh God, yeah, Monkey Moon spiked him out pretty well here. But what is Yad covering? I feel like he's just got, oh, you've got to hit the ball there. Oh, that's a, that's a huge mistake from Yan. To dive off the post like this, I'm going to call it even tripping on the post. Not something I'm used to seeing from a confident player like Yan. Usually he would just flip towards the ball there. He has given Monkey Moon the easiest goal he's going to get all day. He's going high, another bump. Okay, Beautiful. you got it this time. <laughs> Monkey Moon does not seem like he's comfortable. When he's on the back foot, he doesn't have the maneuverability to dodge Yan's aerial bumps. A lot of players have got excellent air double bump defense, but Yan is really testing Monkey Moon here. He should keep doing this. It is working. It, it feels like, I mean, this is a bad comparison, but when you play next though, and you find that the aerial dribbles work, yeah. so it's like, yeah, keep doing it. Yeah, I'm gonna keep the, doing the bump in the air. So, but I mean, how do you defend the shots? Oh, he finally got like one. That. Regardless, Monkey Moon will still keep the control of the ball. Yeah, nice recovery there by Monkey Moon. He just needs to keep this ball moving. Every second wasted is a second Yan needs more than Monkey Moon. That was a sneaky shot by Monkey Moon again, just blasting it on target from distance. Yan sets up the boost seal. He wants a bit of space here to start the air dribble. There it is. You know what's coming next. He's looking for Monkey Moon, <laughs> and he gets him. He's in the bar, but this one's fine. He's got time, and he puts it in. That's three in a row. It's the same technique over and over and over. You can call it cringe, whatever you want. It's working, okay? And he cares about the win. That's it. Yeah, I mean, Monkey Moon has to make an adjustment. Right now, he's full shadow defense against Yan's air dribbles. The problem is, he didn't have any boost to make a switch up there. He was a sitting duck. Monkey Moon has to manage his boost very, very well against Yan's offense and get into position quickly. Oh, that's a quick positional play by Monkey Moon. It's already off the bar and it's open and he scores. He is just too fast on the turn. Greatness from Monkey Moon. Uh, every challenge has been so good so far in this one's game. I, I was going to mention, and I'll, I'll still mention, there was a little bit of frustration on Monkey Moon's face after that last goal from Yanks, but I I'm guessing that right now he's feeling so much better after that goal. Yeah, one inch out of it's relatable when you can see three air dribble bumps in a row. I think Monkey Moon um, is in the majority there if he is frustrated, but that's even more reason for Yan to keep doing it. If he's got Monkey Moon um, you know, in an annoyed state, and surely that's an advantage for him, which he really needs at this moment. Time is getting away from him. Monkey Moon has the ball, and he can really waste a lot of time here does not need to attack and actually he runs straight into Yan. Oh, that's a mistake from Monkey Moon. He thought Yan's going to back off, but with this time remaining, you've got to expect Yan to go. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, with so little on the clock, Yan is going and pushing forward. So Monkey Moon needed to, to hold onto the ball and, and just control it a little bit longer. He had a two-goal lead, which is nice oh. at this stage. Uh, Yang's faked the, the kickoff, uh, but still, I mean, Monkey Moon was able to win it, and now he has a solid uh, chance here. Yeah, Monkey Moon saw that. Oh, he's turning again, and Monkey Moon can just stay close to this ball. He'll deny any air dribble bump from occurring. Yan looking around the ball to see where Monkey oh! Moon is. He saw the jump. Beautiful vision by Yan. He drops the ball into the low 50 at perfect timing. Monkey Moon, who wanted to challenge early, he doesn't want to back off and get air dribble bumped, but Yan adjusts accordingly. Stone cold, Yang. Stone cold completely. I mean, 
the weight, the patience on that play was excellent. Now, I mean, kick off here. <laughs> well, let's see how it goes for either of these two uh, players. Oh, it's Jan. He's got the boost seal. He's going to have a chance for an aerial play here. He can go, he can go all in with this one if he wants to. Monkey Moon gets back, but it's going to be Jan again. Ooh. Monkey Moon's got oh. plenty boost. But what can Jan do with the ceiling reset? The flip, it's denied. Monkey Moon with a huge save. I, I wanted to see the bump. I really wanted to see <laughs> the bump here. But, I mean, it didn't happen. Let, let's see. Kind of a good uh, kickoff for uh, Monkey Moon. But Jan, oh, Jan takes a shot early on. Monkey Moon, there's it it nothing on the tag for Yang, so this is very tough on the Brazilian. Yeah, so much boost for Monkey Moon. The Whoa. right shot sets up, and it's Monkey Moon who wins. He lost his lead late in regulation. He wins it not long into overtime. Full volley, Monkey Moon, too good with the ground shots. He survives and even thrives in 1v1. In everything came down to those three goals that Monkey Moon had at the beginning of the series, uh, of the game. He, he had the lead, and then it was catch up and catch up every single time for Yanks until he was able to tie the game, but he was never on the lead. He was never uh, putting the pace and dictating how the game uh, must have been played. So those three goals early on really took Yanks off guard and gave the win to BDS. Oh, well, you know, right now I'm just really hoping we make it to game six. I want to see that again. <laughs> we see more Yan Monkeyman 1v1. I'd love it in game six if we can have it. Yeah, thank you very much, teams, for uh, editing the script. Because, yeah, I'm sure that Fury would love to see that matchup again. They, you know, the offense started to come together there for Yan at the end of the game. The air dribble bumps were firing. Monkeyman didn't look comfortable against that. He started to gain confidence in defense as well. You know, it was definitely a better second half of the game for the Brazilian. Monkeyman got the job done early. He built a substantial lead, and for the rest of it, he just held on for dear life. Yanks really needed the, the win with a bump. And, and yeah. the reason why is, if you win that way, and then you go onto a 3v3 mode or 2v2 mode, mm. and you keep bumping <laughs> yeah. Monkey Moon. Monkey Moon might leave the building. <laughs> yeah. He might just get up and walk out. I mean, he's actually on the side of the stage closest to the door, so conveniently placed if that's what he plans to do. But yeah, he, did, he didn't get the last chance to make that happen. It was a quick recovery by Monkey Moon, quick challenge as well. That's the key to stopping those big solo plays. Okay, we're going back to the 3v3s here. And it's a two-series, uh, two-game lead for BDS. Something that, to be honest, I mean, if we're looking at rankings, the best, the second best team in the world right now is BDS. So nothing mm. to be surprised here, but Furia was playing so well so far in the tournament that maybe this is a, a little bit surprising for a lot of folks watching from home. Yeah, you know, the, the 1v1 will definitely be a surprise. That was uh, a big step up for Monkey Moon. He's been, you know, far less active than Yan over the past year for 1v1, so that's a big win. Oh my goodness, what a save by Seiko. He asked Arthur, he predicted where that shot was going to go. Yeah, it needs to be a win here for Fury. Hey, unless they want to get another reverse sweep at Gamers 8, uh -huh. that would be pretty cool. And make the El Clasico with uh, with the guys here from BDS instead of uh, Falcons. Or maybe, you know, train for Falcons, uh, maybe I should say. Well, I mean, whatever happens, we, we don't know the script here. It's not still uh, Oh, you, have, you, haven't seen this, you haven't seen the script? I haven't. I, oh, haven't. I, I asked for it, but they, they didn't give me permission. No, wait until yeah. you see what happens next. You're not going to believe <laughs> okay. this. Yep. Crazy. Lost 1v3 play with no boosts. You're not going to believe your eyes. Stay tuned. Yax with a shot. Good save by Monkey Seiko. Towards uh, Rise. Rise has been a little bit quiet on this series. Uh, feels to me that he should be more uh, strong on the offense for BDS. Although, I mean, we gotta say, Furia's defense has been great so far. But I, I want to see Rice. I want to see him uh, be active oh, here he is. the team. Oh, there he was. And uh, now it's Furia going the other way. Seiko again, that last defender for BDS. Once again, quick recovery right back into the play. Seiko recycling himself beautifully, keeping Fury at bay. And with uh, BDS, strong 2v2. I really do think this is a must win for Fury. You know, reverse sweep aside, the fact they've done that before in this format, this is going to be a very tough team to do it against. Right now they're tied. They're playing BDS very close oh, in threes, no. but that's a big miss. It was a lawsuit. Just didn't have the last touch that he needed, Ooh. the last lean that he needed to reach the ball. Oh, what is this? The, the, the whips, the fakes uh, are too much. I mean, I, I mean, yes, I like fakes, but at some point you got to shoot the ball on the net, and that's oh, oh. so close from Seiko. Yeah, Rise quickly back into position. He's got Monkey Moon in the middle, tries to go solo. It's off the post. Seiko's going to get there first. 
His shot denied well by Loss, but the boost has been stolen by Seiko. Everyone in Fury on low boost right now. In fact, that is a massive clear that's really going to help them even out the boost disadvantage. Actually, only Loss got some boost. Other than that, no one did. So this is still very critical for Furia. BDS on the attack, the pass, uh, the back pass for, for Monkey, but Monkey decided to wait a little bit longer. Wise decision for Monkey to rise. Card is up. He's going to beat that one. Lost. Up high. Going to shoot it towards the backboard. No one there to deflect it. Shot from oh. Jans. And two defenders on the net were able to deflect the ball. Yeah, that was just far too straight at the keepers. I think any corner would have made more sense there. Inaccuracy from Furia. As another chance goes to miss. Lost. Looking to dunk on Seiko there. Seiko playing a very safe defensive strategy. And Monkey Moon, just like in 1v1, absolutely sending the ball the full length of the pitch. He's, you know he's in form when the hits are heavy. Watch out now for Rise with Card. Up high. Monkey Moon now against Yanks. Let's see. A shot from Seiko right what? to try and missing that one as well. That was... I was that nearly a call. I feel like that was a double commit gone right as it was almost a pre-jump rebound by BDS. Ooh. Here comes Rise with a double tap. He's missed it. Monkey Moon follow-up block by Yan. Furious surviving into the final minute now. Still a tie game. Nil-nil. And surviving is the right word, definitely, because BDS is attacking with everything right now. And Furia somehow avoiding every single shot on the net or deflecting them somehow. But but the attack is very poor for Furia. They haven't had a, any chance of, you know, a second a second touch or something that really challenges BDS on the net. Yeah, they just need that piece of magic from one of their players. We know they're all capable of magic when they're on farm. And it's BDS to look more lively. Rise starting to come into the picture more and more in offense. Cuts rotation again. Doesn't get the double tap middle. Seiko's goes back though, and BDS Following up each other's touches so quickly, really putting a ton of pressure on Furia here. He's starting to crack. Double commit, defended well by Yan. I feel the same way, yeah. They're, they're cracking a little bit here. Getting uh, desperate. The attack oh, 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 oh. and rise. I was uh, asking for him. He has been trying, uh, you know, just putting the ball very closely with individual plays, uh, allowing Seiko and Monkey Moon to take, a, to take a breather, you know, and relax and maybe go for boost, get a better positioning, keep attacking. Rice has been doing so much, but somehow BDS still hasn't found the goal. The speed of Monkey Moon taking Card out of the game. There, Lost has Yan to his left. He decides to go down the right hand side of the pitch instead. Card now joining the attack. Quick wall dash. Only able to get him as far as Monkey Moon. And once again, look at the hard clears from BDS. Whenever they need to get out of trouble, they absolutely send the ball down the other side of the pitch. Big wall pinch there by Monkey Moon. Backs up the defense. It's gone middle Ooh. for Rise. Oh. Deflected backwards by Monkey Moon. I think he anticipated a save there, so he's done that intentionally. No, it was the right idea. Completely right idea for Monkey Moon. Yeah, the, the save was going to be there. Seiko now a good shot. Oh, it's there in. it is. There it is. BDS just find a way through. Card all alone here, needed to make a touch to deny Rise, but he had no boost left to make the follow-up save. Furia need to do what they did last year. Reverse sweep in a best of seven crew battle, starting with 2v2. So, who do you say as 2v2? Because we know Card is a very good 2v2 player. He did it last time. He was uh, the 2v2 player for Furia. Now it's been lost, the, the player that is doing the 2v2 duo with uh, Yanks. But is, is it a time for a change? Because I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying that Lost is playing bad, but do, do we risk it all here? Do we try something different? Or do we go with what has been not, not it's, really it's working tough. for them? Because uh, they haven't been winning every single 2v2 that they have, they have had uh, so far. Yeah. So. yeah, Lost and Yan played the first day's 2v2s. Uh, they were able to destroy the Limitless 7-3. Then they lost, of course, to Falcons, TRK, now both three one and twos. And uh, yeah, for day two, like you mentioned, it was Yan and Card. Uh, they were able to win against uh, Pioneers comfortably 3-1. They were able to beat FaZe, Mist, and First Killer 2-1. And then they lost as well. So both of the Furia 2v2 combinations have lost once. They've lost in the last game of day one and day two, respectively. And funnily enough, the only uh, duo we've seen from BDS has been Monkey Minaseko. There it is again. It's going to be lost. It was back to day one. 
or Furia. And they are going to get the first chance here. It's Yan against Seiko this time. A bump comes through from Lost, turns it into a 2v1. And it's 1-0 to the Brazilians. And these are the things that Lost wasn't doing before, and now he is uh, actively going for. Uh, that bump didn't hit Seiko, but it was enough to throw Seiko off the play and not be in full position to, def to defend the, the ball. So great start for Furia. Uh, Yanks, so far, good addition. Let's see if uh, they continue with the win here, with the, yeah, with the win here in the game. Yeah, it's uh, BDS who have the undefeated 2v2 once again. And just like we said earlier on today, they've only played one of them. So, <laughs> yeah, they've only, they only played the one uh, to the two 1v1s. They've only played the, the one 2v2 before this. So we haven't really got a lot of evidence. Oh, what a save by Yano. It's off the post. Can he read the bounce? The bounce is too high. That's a heartbreaker. Luckily, they've still got the lead here. And they would have loved to make it too as BDS start to... Come back here, French 2v2. Worldwide famous for a reason. Seiko has been a sharp shooter so far. Like every single shot from Seiko has been powerful, well placed. Uh, Monkey Moon definitely, uh, you know, making it easier for him, just yeah. going for the bump and Lost not being able to uh, get right on the ball uh, as he needed to. But still, I mean, Seiko in every single mode that we have seen, we're on 3v3s and 2v2s that he has played, uh, been deadly attacker. And this is a big statement from BDS. Obviously, they're fully focused on their opponent's Furia right now, but if they can sweep the defending champions this side of the bracket, and indeed everyone remaining in the tournament will be terrified, but it's Furia who fires second. Yan makes it 2-1. It was a loss who set it up. Positioning of the back post for Yan was critical. A loss just blocking, dunking on, on that save, uh, on that clear from BDS. It's what gave Yang such a good positioning for the for the shot. So now, a lead for Furia. Let's see how BDS uh, counterattacks. I think Monkey was going for the pass, but Seiko decided not to go. Very smart from Seiko. Opportunity here, but Yang gets the ball out of the way. Passes to towards Loss. Loss in a up two up front on this situation. Wasn't able to get the pass. Seiko. Now attacking by Yanks uh, and his Monkey Moon with the clear. So he go very close to that ball in a bad position for a loss, but he was able to reject the, the shot. Yeah, another lead for Furia. Not really been able to establish strong leads in any of these games here. It's always been coming back from behind. It's always been just holding on to one goal leads. It could be so valuable to get another one, but here comes Seiko again with the air dribble bump attempt. Lost has kept it out oh, beautifully as well, fully controlling the ball, putting it in a place his teammate you could follow up on. Now Monkey Moon backflips, maybe getting a little bit of a reminder of his first 1v1 in the tournament there. Just trying to get, get up so quickly there. Monkey Moon obviously has a ton of respect for the speed of his opponents. I gotta say, I'm, I'm enjoying so much the the back and forth uh, here in this match and, and the passing plays from BDS. They're looking for each other the whole time. Oh, that's close. Like, they know it's very, it's going to be very hard for them to beat in a 1v1 uh, the players from Furia. Oh. So they're doing everything they can to involve both both players on the plays and in that way open up the net. Yeah, you could you could have absolutely nothing on the line here and Monkey Man and Seiko would be sweating. This could be a private match for zero dollars and they would still be trying to defend their pride, their 2v2 mastery. Ooh. Oh, that's a big dunk, Yan! I don't know where makes it 3-1. Seiko has tried to keep control of the ball in the back corner, but he lost control and again, it's lost actually with a little bump that put Seiko on the wrong side of the ball. Yeah, and the ball went in with a blue trail, so it actually hit Seiko in the end and somehow still went in, into the net. So good play by Yanks, but uh, again, a little bit of luck here that, oh, Surely. what a shot, that's oh, wow. so close. Seiko coming in clutch to save that one. Yeah, I love the shot selection there. It hasn't gone in though. Now here comes Monkey Man, another lean back reset, another fake. This time, the follow up is coming through first for Furia. Good bump. Couldn't get the ball, but the bump is good. Uh, just takes the ball away completely from BDS. However, BDS challenging fast, makes uh, forces Furia to go for the ball in the air. Now Lost has a chance of 1v1 against Monkey Moon. He decided to go. Well, he didn't have that much in the tank, but that's that's a gift. That's a present to Monkey yeah. Moon. Yeah, I mean, he's really hoping that Monkey Moon pre-jumps um, to try and defend against an aerial play there. Just switching things up, trying to keep BDS guessing. Uh, it's BDS who really have to 
start taking risks, something they don't often do, but they've oh, got no, a clear here. Seiko hits the bar. It was a very tight angle open net with the rebound. Monkey Moon left the net open for him. It's been such a physical game with the passing plays. Here's another one, and it works out for BDS. Jax didn't have that much uh, on the boost uh, tank for that. Actually, he had 50-something. No, he had enough. He had enough. He just wasn't sure where Monkey Moon was going to place that ball. He, he kind of had an idea of the, where Seiko was, but not completely. <laughs> is Kart is sleeping or meditating, by the way, on stage? We need, to get, we need to get someone to take a picture of Card right now. Is he meditating? Is he praying? Is, I don't know what he's doing, but he, he looks like he's... Visualizing, visualizing. Either that or he just can't watch because it seems life's on the line and there's nothing he can do about it. It's <laughs> BDS knocking at the door again <laughs> with only 45 seconds left. Good defense from there, there from Furia. Keeping the backboard covered. Keeping the ball in a safe position. They might actually be able to double up again. Not with the quick recovery from Monkey Man. 30 seconds here on the clock. BDS needs a goal, and it is now. Jax, kind of a doink here. Uh, not the best loss with a beautiful 50. Very good to do another attack or maybe it'll waste some time. Yes, they're wasting time. Very smart from Furia. Getting one demo and the white, the net is wide oh. open. They miss that one. Yes, oh, what? misses the, the, the hit. And now it's wide open for BDS, but no, lost on time. So they want to get a slight touch. And now uh, Seiko, oh, way high. Yeah. No one's going to get <laughs> it. And Furia survives here on game number four. Well, that's the start of a reverse sweep. <laughs> Card is back. He's back in the building. He's awake. I think uh, Mateus just walked up to him there and said, Oh, we won. You've got to play again, buddy. Like, okay, right? Okay. Y Good thing. You're a fan of power naps. I love power naps. You need to learn how to power nap at some time in your life. Sometimes it's like a it's like a reset, you know? Whenever something's broken and you want to fix it, you just turn it off and on again. It's the same thing for humans. You just have a quick power nap, you're ready to go. It's a card back in the building. They've yep. lost both the 3v3 games so far, but I can't wait to see what a non-sleep deprived card is going to do. <laughs> he is going to be a different beast. Yannan lost. No, what to do in 2v2. It's clear. It's very interesting, actually. One more win for Furia. We might go back uh, to 1v1. We could be going back to 2v2. I mean, it's hard to say because we kind of expected BDS to have the slightly better 2v2 and maybe Furia to have the slightly better 1v1. And they've both gone against our predictions. But the thing that isn't, I mean, it's going exactly as predicted is that BDS is dominating the 3v3s. Yeah. And so far, we have seen two of those. Uh, close one. The, the first one was very, very close. Actually, I, I feel like Furia was looking a little bit better until until they were not, right? And now they have a chance to continue here. Right? Furia did it last year. They were in this same position and they kept winning and winning. Maybe this is the fire that they need to survive here and get the win against BDS. Oh, you know, the, the pressure is so different in the crew battle when the reverse sweep is on the cards. Um, you lose game five and it's suddenly it's a two game difference, or one game difference, sorry. Half your match points gone. And you're going into a game mode that is not 3v3, no matter what. Game six will be 1v1 or 2v2. Which it is, we'll have to wait and see if Furia can get their first win in threes. The only team who's been able to stop BDS in 3v3 Ooh. is Vitality. And that's not for Furia R. Monkey Moon sends a long shot into their net as Furia tried to get the attack going. And that's careless from Yan straight towards Monkey Moon who read the 50-50 perfectly and pounced on it. Careless from Yang's car didn't jump on the on the head. And we have seen it over and over and over. I mean, in the 1v1s, that's basically how Monkey Moon was able to win. Power shot after power shot after power shot. He is so precise uh, on those shots. They're going towards the net. So early lead now for BDS. Let's see what they can do. Continue here. The opportunity that was a, a little bit open, but it's still Monkey Moon was able to receive it. Yanks in midfield playing. Monkey Moon receives it. Let it for rise. Good defense on the backboard from Furia, but the continuation from Yang's uh, a little bit questionable. And again, Monkey Moon just reading the game so well there. Both of those Ooh. 50s going his way. Lost having his save. Top corner shot from Rise now. The Seiko lunging in. They're testing huh. Furia's boost management here. Seeing if they can survive. Only Lost has a lot of boost to play with here. And he's next up on the play. Can he keep control? Well, he doesn't have to. Monkey Moon's actually driven past it. But in comes Seiko. It's in front of the net for Rise. Yan doing a good job to clear it. 
Furia have survived. No loss. The one we want against Monkey Moon going for the pump, but they missed the pump. Maybe Monkey Moon is learning a little bit after that 1v1 Whoa. with Yangs. Open net and Seiko. No, he was there. He was there. He was able to catch it. Move forward. Rise with the pass. Seiko with a shot. But the loss was there on the backboard waiting for it. Yeah, lost with one. Reset clear. And then a block as well. The whole team's going to commit here, but they do have lost recovering for the BDS counter attack. Again, it is mostly BDS pressure. They're in their comfort zone right now. And like we said, there's only been one team who's been able to stop BDS from doing this. It's Vitality, who are on this side of the bracket. Furia have yet to find success against BDS in 3v3. They need to right now, or they will be eliminated and unable to defend their title. Seems like the, this playstyle is kryptonite for the Furia. Uh, definitely from... Uh from BDS. Oh, Whoa. what a close shot, but Lost is able to get the rebound and put it on the net. We have a tight match. Well, just when it looked like Seiko was going to be the hero for BDS again in defense, we realized he's crept off his goal line. Slightly out of position there, Seiko, for the shot, but, you know, he wanted to be close to potentially defend against a one-touch shot, so tough position to be in, certainly. He's been so strong in tough positions all series. Now Furia find a way through him. Rice getting a lot of power on that clear from the wall. Card up front, but it's Seiko. Up high, who's gonna catch the ball. Yanks waiting for it. Couldn't get any, any contact with the ball. Lost way back now. Seiko waiting for him. Seiko couldn't hit it. Lost now. Waiting for the pass for Card. Card in position, but oh. not able to make contact once again. Yanks pushing forward. The ball still in lost hands. Very close to the net, but BDS somehow is able to pull it to the wall and not exactly get the clear, but at least get a breather oh from goodness. the play. Well, lost pre jump there is nowhere near the ball. That's bold. I mean, it shows that Fury is definitely feeling confident right now. Here comes Rise with the big mind game. He's bumped off the play, and the follow shot is saved. Well, Fury are doing a great job to survive here, but BDS are really starting to test them with follow up plays that are coming in so quickly. Both sides allowing the, the ball to get very close to the net. Interesting <laughs> at this point in the in the in the game. Rice couldn't do much. The pass for Seiko is good. He decided to go a little bit off. Maybe to allow Rice uh, to continue the play, but that wasn't the case. Monkey Moon to Seiko. Seiko trying to go over his card. It's good. Rice misses that one. It's gonna be in lost his hands. He has a chance to go, but rise a little bit too fast. Monkey Moon waiting for the ball. Card now pushing forward against the backboard. Seiko waiting for it patiently. And Whoa, this is oh it. my goodness. Well, that's going to be a chance. No, Monkey Moon again cutting off in the middle, but that was a big mistake by Seiko, who nearly set up Furia. The interesting part is that Seiko misses badly, but BDS keeps control of the ball beautifully, and Furia is not able to take advantage of that situation at all. Yeah, Monkey Moon's reading the game very well. He's always in the right spot to help his teammates out when they're in trouble. Seiko's not in trouble here. It gets a nice Ooh. 50 past one. And Rise is there to stop Card's attack before it can even get started. And Rise looking for another fake. He's got the catch in the Furia half, deep in the Furia half. Good control by Lost, though. Seiko jumps, but misses. Oh, BDS and Furia sitting very deep right now. Both teams are... Just trying to make it into overtime without taking any risks that are too unnecessary. There was a pass in the middle, but there was a bump, okay? The demo, <laughs> the demo took out the opportunities to get the pass, so we are now in overtime. One by Rice, full tank, trying to go for the reset, but good defense by Furia, who's, you know, they're understanding Rice a little bit, so they're waiting for him uh, quite a lot. And, and being able to nullify his attempts in, in attack. However, you know, Seiko oh, wow. and Monkey Moon have done very good. What? The opportunity, but the ball. Oh my. Monkey Moon just played that perfectly. He had no boost in a 2v1, and he managed to clear the ball, not just save it. Seiko and Rise were completely out of the game there, but great defense from Monkey Moon. Now, can he oh, win lost. it? You bet he can. BDS advance. The defending champions are no more. Lost had the right idea, but sweaty hands, spaghetti hands, whatever. I don't know. Something happened in there. Wasn't able to 
had to go for the attack, and Monkey Moon, who has been such a sniper, such a power hitter throughout the whole uh, series, finishes off as you expect from him, you know, one of the best players in the world. And that's the end of Furious Run. Still, I think, a good end to this season with the top eight. They couldn't make the World Championship, but they're still showing that they're one of the best teams in the world. But nobody can stop BDS so far in crew battles. Well, one of only three undefeated teams left in the tournament. Uh, yeah, goodbye to the defending champions. They could not replicate last year's performance. It was a great fight, though. I'm sure there's plenty more in the future for these players, for this team. But wow, BDS are absolutely here to play in crew battles. We wondered if their 1v1 was going to show up as huge as it has, but Monkeyman remains undefeated. And we're here now with the victorious rise. Congratulations, you're on to the semifinals. So many overtimes now, what, four overtimes in that series. Seiko won a couple of them. Explain for the mere mortals here how you stay so focused in overtime. Well, I do think we dominated the majority of the games, especially in threes. I don't really watch the ones or twos, but you know, like, you just got to stay focused, trust in your teammates, and you'll get the result in the end. معنا رايز اعزائنا المشاهدين فريق بي دي اس كان يتكلم عن وش اللي صار في المباراه بالذات سالناه عن الاوفر تايمز اللي صارت في المباراه الماضيه اربع اوفر تايمز بشكل كامل فقال انه بصراحه احنا اكثر شيء احنا نسويه بالاوفر تايم ان نحاول نركز نحاول اننا نوثق بالتيم ميت اللي معانا ونحاول اننا نركز على انه خلاص انا عارف انه ان شاء الله بيقدرون يفوزون والثقه هذه هي اللي تخليهم دائما يقدرون يركزون ويخلصون الجيم لصالحهم حتى في الاوفر تايم we're all well aware of Furious history here at Gamers 8. You go up 3-0 in that series. It looked like Mew had kind of an extra message for you guys. What was he telling you going into game four? Um, just that we're the better team, that we deserve to win the twos game as well, is what he was saying. Don't know if that was true or not, but, you know, we, I mean, Mew always just gives us, like, rallies us before games, gets us, like, hyped up, and it works. أحد الناس اللي موجودين من فريق بي دي أس كان شاهدناه قبل ما يدخلون على المباراة قاعد يكلمهم بشكل خاص يعني كان قاعد يقول لهم كلمه فكنا نسال وش كان يقول لكم ذاك اللحظه؟ كان يقول انه اكثر شيء كان يركز عليه يقول انه بس حاول انك تفوزون في المباراه وبالذات ركزوا على التوز لانه هو يبدو لي انه هو الشيء اللي بي دي اس ممكن يكونون ضعيفين فيه شوي لكن كان يقول لهم حاولوا تفوزون بالتوز اكثر شيء وركزوا عليها. With this win now you've amassed at least 200 grand out of this event as a team. Has it sunk in yet now that in the past two weeks your team has raked in Six hundred thousand dollars. Like, it, what do you do with that kind of money? You're going to be swimming in it by the end of this. Well, you know, the money is the the secondary. We don't think about the money. We think about the result. We think about winning. I've come second too many times this season. You know, that was the the revenge for Worlds last year. Got my boy Vitera back for that one as well. Next, we win. زي ما تشوفون رايز في آخر سؤال اللي كنا نتكلم عن كمية الفلوس اللي قدروا يكسبونها منظمة بي دي أس خصوصا أنه الآن بعد الفوز هذا قدروا يضمنون 200 ألف دولار من هذه المباراة فقط بتوجههم للنصف النهائي فأي شعور تجاه هالشيء هذا يقول أنه صراحة حنا الفلوس بالنسبة لنا يكون هو شيء ثانوي ما هو شيء أساسي أبدا أكثر شيء حنا نركز عليه أنه نبغى نفوز نبغى اللقب ونبغى الكأس وهذا هو الشيء اللي حنا نركز عليه لكن أكثر شيء أيضا أنه كان ودنا نتغلب على فيوريا لأنهم السنة الماضية في كأس العالم فازوا علينا والآن قدرنا أن نردهم الصعصعين وقدرنا نفوز عليهم في جيمر زيت. Winning is everything. That's why this is one of my favorite competitors out there. Congrats again on the win. We'll see you in the semifinals tomorrow. Onward to the desk. كم العافية زين المشاهدين جاء الوقت إننا نروح الآن لرسي تحليلي نتكلم أكثر عشان كنا نصير في المباراة القادمة إن المباراة الأخيرة في المين إيفنت عندنا في هذا اليوم.